Hey there everyone, it's Caitlin, your geeky girlfriend, back again with another video in my Real Talk movie review series. It's been a long time since I've been with you guys here in this series, so I'm happy to be back. I've got a lot of new videos um, being uploaded, so check the channel. There's a lot new movie reviews coming your way, and starting with this one in tonight's video. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing The Kissing Booth Part 3, and as always, there are minor spoilers ahead for this video. Now. The um, Kissing Booth is part three in a series that Netflix did. It is a Netflix original movie series, and I will I will be giving a series recap in this video. However, I won't be doing extensive reviews of the other two videos. Let me or the other two movies. Let me know in the comments if you want to see um, a review of number one and number two. This is just a review of number three. But in order to give you guys a an aspect of this film, we're going to go ahead and do a series recap. So the series follows Elle, played by Joey King. Um, you may recognize her from some other movies, including Ramona and Beezus, Crazy Stupid Love, um, and then she's had some HBO Hulu thrillers as well. Um, and she plays Elle, who has a best friend named Lee. Um, and you can see Lee in the picture in the top left. He's the one sitting down. Um, Jacob Kaledri or something like that plays Lee. I'm not sure how to say his name, um, but he plays Lee in all three of the films. And the film starts off in number one, or the series starts off in film number one by introducing Lee and Elle. And they have a series of lists that they do together as best friends. They have like a um, senior year bucket list, a beach bucket list, like in part three. So they create all these lists. Um, they've been friends for almost their entire lives. Their parents were friends. And so they've just been best friends their whole life. So they have all these different lists. Well, in the first um, film, their school puts on a fundraiser and it's a kissing booth where people can pay a dollar to kiss a mystery person in the kissing booth. And it turns out that Lee's older brother, Noah, is um, partakes in the kissing booth and kisses Elle. And Elle is enamored by this kiss and she spends like a good chunk of the first movie trying to figure out who it was. Well, when she finds out who it was, then um, she and Noah kind of start to see each other, but she is scared that it's going to hurt Lee's feelings. So um, the first movie kind of talks about that and how she navigates that. And then the second movie, Noah goes off to college. Um, and so Elle and Noah have to navigate this long distance relationship. Lee is struggling with the fact that he is not in a relationship. He ends up in a relationship later in that film. And so we kind of just see like some jealousy spark between the two brothers. We see some jealousy spark between another male character in the film named Marco, who Elle kind of starts to form a friendship with. Noah gets jealous. So the second movie really focuses on Elle and Noah's relationship, which I am all for. I'm team Noah all the way. And then we get to the culmination of the series here in the Kissing Booth Part 3. Again, I told you guys some spoilers. That was a big one. Noah and Elle get together. Sorry about it. He's also the mystery kisser in the Kissing Booth Part 1. Oops, spoiler. Um, so now that brings us to Part 3. These pictures on the screen are um, pictures from Part 3. Um, you see the beach bucket list. You do see Elle and Noah hanging out by the pool. Um, you see them kind of canoodling down there at the bottom. And then the whole premise of Part 3 is that it's after high school. This is their last summer before they go off to college. Elle has a big decision to make, whether she's going to go to Berkeley with Lee or she's going to go to Harvard with Noah. And she's kind of torn between the two worlds and her two guys. Um, they also are trying to enjoy the last remnants of their summer before Noah and Lee's parents decide to sell their beach house, which is where they've spent all these summers before, right? So they're trying to finish up this summer and they have a lot of epic little pranks and activities that they always wanted to do at the beach house. And so they spend the whole summer trying to do those things. Elle also spends the entire summer trying to figure out what she wants to go to school and what she wants to do. Um, and she kind of is receiving guidance from different characters along the way um, to help her make that decision. So some pros and cons. Pros. There's a really cool Mario Kart scene um, at the water park that is really funny. It's a little bit dramatic and I was a little, I didn't put it on here as a con, but it is a bit of a con in the movie as well because I mentioned the other male character, Marco, and Noah's jealousy kind of gets the better of him. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, but that was also kind of a con because it was supposed to be like this really fun scene and it just is kind of ruined or overshadowed by 
Noah's like jealousy because Noah kind of ruins the whole thing. And I know that's why a lot of people don't like Noah. And if you've seen the series, you might feel differently about being team Noah. You may be team Marco or team Lee or whatever. Um, another pro is Molly Ringwald. I love Molly Ringwald. My favorite movie, if you've followed me anywhere on the blog or this channel, you know that my, one of my favorite movies is The Breakfast Club and Molly Ringwald is part of the Brat Pack in The Breakfast Club. She was also um, a very lead character in Secret Life of the American Teenager. And since she has played Archie Andrews' mom on, Ring, um, on Riverdale and has played um, Noah and Lee's mom in this series of Netflix films. So she has kind of come you know, from her 80s fame, she's still like very well known and in a lot of popular movies and TV shows today. And she is very influential on Elle and those two have a really good relationship. And I just think that she is a very strong willed woman. And she's just a good role model of like a good, strong parent and parental figure. And I just think she plays it really well. She does that in every single series that she's in. Um, and I just feel like she really plays the parent role well in anything that she does. Um, Elle's dad is also really good in this film. He's a very minor character throughout the series, but he does kind of stand up to Elle and tell her that he's disappointed in her, um, for some of the actions and the words that she says in this film. And I think that's really important to see. Um, you know, it's important for teens to see that even though it may feel like your world is spiraling out of control, you still have to have control of your emotions and your words. And he kind of reigns that in on her and says, I'm very disappointed in you. And um, I just really like that. Again, like a strong parental figure is really important to see in today's media. And so I really liked that little tiny minuscule part of the film that was a favorite part of mine. And then the final pro is the realness of the whole situation. So Elle is getting ready to go to college. Like I've said a few times, she's torn between her boyfriend of two years and her best friend of, you know, 16, 18, whatever years. Um, and the realness and the reality of that decision for a high school senior to make and the, you know, idea of disappointing someone or not being true to yourself or going somewhere just to keep someone else happy, like it's very real. And it's important for teens to see this and see Elle's journey um, and to see her decision because I think it's, you know, you don't have to go to a certain school because you're dating someone. You don't have to go to a certain school because your best friend is going there. Um, if they're truly meant to be in your life, then they will support you in whatever decision. Um, so just the reality of it. And I do like and I admire Elle's choice at the end of the film. I'm not going to give it away, um, but I'm going to give a slight spoiler here in just a second when we talk about the cons, but I'm not going to give away the overall um, decision that she makes. So the cons. Overall, I hated the way this series ended. This series, I love... The first movie is very much a rom-com, and so it has like this romantic undertone, right? It's got this real, it's got this reality of this, you know, teens are going away to college, making big life decisions and all of that. But underneath of that, there is still this romance storyline. And I'm team Noah 100%. And I was very upset at how this series ended. It kind of just leaves viewers like not really sure what is going on with Elle and Noah. Um, and I'm not that that could go one way or the other. You read into that what you will. Um, and I, I just hated the way that it ended. Like I felt like we watched all three of these movies and then the second movie, um, there's like a whole big drama between them They you think they work it out and then it just keeps like going back and forth. And I don't like the up and down aspect of it because when they're together, they are really good. So I just don't like the up and down aspect of it. The other thing I don't like is Lee's selfishness and treatment of Elle. Other people may watch this film and think he's not selfish at all. She's the one being selfish, but I disagree. I think Lee is very childish in these in this series. He is very much only concerned about his own feelings and how he feels. There's a whole stink in this last film about their Dance Dance Revolution machine, the Dance Dance Revolution machine. Um, is very sentimental to them and they do have a lot of memories together and it goes with them throughout the whole series of films. However, there's a stink in this one because the Dance Dance Revolution machine is getting taken out of the arcade and Lee or Elle can't be there because she has to work or something with maybe something with Noah. I'm not even 100% sure. I don't even remember now what the reason is that she couldn't be there. But she works her butt off all summer long to give Lee the best summer of his life. And 
he still is like completely ungrateful for it. And I just feel like he's being very selfish. Um, and he just doesn't treat Elle very well at all throughout the series. I don't feel like, um, he like constantly is saying that he, she's giving more of her attention to Noah and blah, like constantly makes her feel bad about herself for having a boyfriend. I understand that it was his older brother and it was supposed to be this friend zone, you know, friend boundary line thing. But in some regard, he has to look at it and be like, okay, look, these two people really like each other. They care about each other. They're good to each other. I have to step back and let my own feelings kind of step aside. And he never does that. On the flip side, Noah also shows very little maturation throughout the series. Um, he likes Elle, shows that he likes her. They start, they get together. Um, but then he also, for being a college sophomore, you know, he's supposed to be 20, 21, he is not mature. Like he gets very jealous. He handles his anger and emotions very poorly. And he just has really poor emotional regulation, which is not a good thing either. So um, just there are certain things that the series and the writers could have done differently that would have made this movie in particular a lot better. And then also like there is a decision made in the film that is just, oh, that's what it is. Um, the Dance Dance Revolution thing, Lee goes to see Noah, a big thing happens. She comes to Lee crying and Lee just like doesn't even care. So I was very upset watching it because I was like, he doesn't even care. He's just so selfish. So again, you may watch this film and think differently. This is just my opinion, my honest review. Overall, my score for The Kissing Booth Part 3 is a D minus. I was so upset at the end of this film. Um, at the very end, they do do sort of like a time jump to kind of show you where they all are now, but I thought that was pointless. I thought they should have just left it. It would have been better if they would have just left it and left the audience kind of wondering because they brought, they did this time jump and then you're still left wondering. So they didn't really answer any questions by doing the time jump. The only thing they really accomplished was showing Joey King's new haircut, which is a full on pixie cut. So I was not a fan of this particular movie. However, I think the series as a whole is very good. And the second movie is probably, mm, I don't know, the first and second one are close. Probably the first one's the best. And then the second one is close behind it. But for a Netflix original film series, similar to the PS I Love You, um, Lara Jean, to all the boys I love before series, um, they're great. They're both great series, both great trilogies. This film just was a letdown for me. D minus, I am not looking forward to watching it again, but I would go back and watch the first and second one again because I liked how those ones ended. So if you liked this video, as always, let me know in the comments and um, let me know if you want me to do a full review of part one and two. I would love to rewatch those ones again and give you guys a full review. Um, I did do a, a good recap here for you and I encourage you to go watch it for yourself. Let me know if you're team Noah, team Lee, where you stand if you're team Marco. I know some people who are team Marco. So let me know in the comments and I hope you guys enjoy these videos. As always, you can follow me on Instagram and um, it's the same handle at your geeky girlfriend. And I look forward to seeing all of you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.